Around six months ago, I decided to delete social media for good. In the beginning, I was literally a monk where I didn't talk to anybody and lived a very ascetic lifestyle. Now in university, I'm actually going outside and sounds cheesy, I know, touching grass and talking to people has replaced me snapping the dozens of fake friends I had on Snapchat. I'll get straight to the point. It was hard at first, but trust me, once I got used to it, it was good. Heck, I think it may have been the best decision I've made in my life. Hey, before we start the video, this is Andy from the future. I just wanted to let you know, this video contains very minimal editing and it's more of a straight to the point type video. I want it to come off as more authentic. And if I did add a lot of editing, more like uh, those viewer retention, audience retention type edits, edits, this would go against everything I said in the video. And this would go against, you know, this dopamine detox I've been on in the past six months. So enjoy the authenticity, enjoy the honesty. And uh, remember, if you wanna see the rainbow, you gotta put it with the rain, enjoy. Once I got like a week into it, once I got a month into it, I kinda got used to it. All those days staring into the wall ahead of me. Like, it gave my brain time to reflect, to, to think. Boredom, believe it or not, you gotta embrace it. This is something I've learned. You gotta embrace it because, one, it's gonna show you how bad your bad habits are. And two, it's going to lead you to do things that you wouldn't do otherwise. So in my example, one weekend, because I, I didn't have like those a copium with me. So I could only stare into the wall or look at a book that I had bought. So I bought Atomic Habits by James Clear. It was on the desk and like I hadn't picked it up in like two days, right? It's ever since it came in the mail. And then I just stared at it. And eventually by, I don't know, like day five or so, that looked attractive as fuck. I picked it up and then I started reading Atomic Habits. Like, can you fucking believe that? It's because I've read this book, I've embraced boredom, I've started reading very seriously, and I've really deep dived into self-improvement because of this big dopamine detox, this big no social media barrier I set for myself. So what I've learned is to embrace boredom. Because boredom is what's gonna make you move out of your fucking bed in the morning. Boredom is what's gonna drive you to do shit that you wouldn't do otherwise. Hey, embrace boredom. Embrace socialism, okay. <laughs> not, not the fucking, not the red, red type of socialist. I mean like, embrace being social, being a social. I wouldn't say I've been a shy person all my life because I, I, I would be lying if I said that because I don't know, like I spoke to my mom the other day and she told me, Andy, you, you, Andy, you have always been a very social child. You, you are ever since you were in the, okay. Okay. I get the point, mom. But once puberty hit, I really do think something changed within me because quite literally something did change the hormones, like the, the balance and everything, everything changes. I don't think I was as social as I was before. You know, I was, I wasn't trying to be social, but like now something, something really changed and I wanted to be social. I wanted to be one of the cool kids. I wanted to be one of those those fucking irrelevant people that we would call back in the day. That made me kind of shy. I'm gonna lie. You know, it took me a few years to finally get out of my shell. But once I decided to go on this deep dive dopamine detox, self improvement, six months without social media. Yet again, I got bored as fuck, and I was going to the gym right. I was, I was starting all these good habits thanks to Atomic Habits and also, you know, this YouTuber I discovered named Hamza, uh, check him out. By the way, I think he has absolutely changed my life. I was going to the gym and I got bored yet again. So, hey, what did I do? I, I walked up to people, I started chatting them up. You know, I started releasing my inner riz I didn't know I had. Like that's fucking incredible, right? I, I literally just walked up, I'm like, hey, even if it was a woman, I'd be like, you are absolutely jacked. Please show me your secrets. And then <laughs> that start a conversation, that initiate a conversation. All because of the fact that I embraced socialism, being social. And what made me do that? Embracing boredom made me do that. Something else I've learned is also to embrace pain. 
No, this is not some fucking Eren Uzumaki shit, okay? It's not some attack on Naruto shit. I really do think pain is what makes you grow. If you don't have pain, you aren't pushing yourself enough. Is something I've realized. If you aren't experiencing pain, you aren't experiencing change. Pain is the catalyst to change, to improvement, to growth. You had growing pains when you were younger. In the gym, you feel sore the day after you fucking hit a PR in the gym. You feel pain after you break up with, you know, a long-time girlfriend or boyfriend. That's because you're changing. You're growing. This pain is going to make you remember this, you know, the pain you felt. <laughs> Sounds cheesy, I know, but this pain is going to make you remember so that you don't commit the same mistake or mistakes the next time. This is what makes you learn. They say trial and error is, is what makes you learn, right? But I think there's another facet to it. There's another face to it. There's another side to it. Pain, along with trial and error, will make you learn from your mistakes. And also from the mistakes of others. That's why I think we developed emotions. Because, you know, you have... Okay, picture fucking Andrew from 15,000 before Common Era. Now he's in his tribe, right? And then... All the, all the people around him are experiencing pain. What is he going to experience? Because of the emotions he's developed, uh, he's evolved to feel. He feels pain too. So the whole tribe, if somebody dies because of some t sort of mistake or accident, the whole tribe feels pain and they are going to remember this and they are not going to commit the same mistake the next time. So, embrace pain. Something I've learned is to embrace this pain whenever I feel, whenever I get fucking rejected by some girl like Code Approach or whenever I, you know, I get, I get, I get ignored by some people I walk up to talk to. This is going to make me remember, but to, you know, change up this word that I said or change up the attitude, my smile, the way I look. Pain is what makes you think. It's what, what, it's what makes you remember and grow. So embrace the pain. And during these past six months of extreme growth, I think I've experienced a lot of pain, but I've gotten used to it. I've gotten numb to it because I know this pain is allowing me to grow. And I'm continuously pushing myself, trying to experience pain. So the point is, embrace this pain. The point of the whole video is to, to tell you to embrace this boredom that you feel embrace being social right people might just need a little nudge sometimes and you just you just start a conversation right embrace pain because these three things will constitute a well-rounded life for you in the future and one that is filled with a lot of insight and enjoyment and happiness so hey remember if you want to see the rainbow you gotta put up with the rain peace Sarapagarai.